Hi everyone. In today's video, we'll revisit a topic I've covered before. However, with the influx of new users into our community, it has become clear some of the information has become outdated and confusing. In this video, we will be covering the foundation of getting started with OpenXR using Godot 4. There are some structural changes coming in Godot 4.2 and we'll cover those differences here as well. I will include timestamps to all relevant parts. Note that Mac users should download Godot 4.2. Before we get started with the video, Malcolm Nixon and myself are organizing a Godot XR game jam coming weekend. We're running it through itch.io. I'll put the link in the description. This will be a nice opportunity to try out using Godot for a small XR project. Even if you're not making a project, we hope you will have fun trying out some of the entries. The best place for help if you are participating remains the official Godot Discord channel. We have a dedicated XR channel there that is very active. You can find the link on the community page of the Godot website. Speaking of Discord, I have opened up my Discord channel to those interested in talking about all things Godot XR related. My Discord also contains member channels for my YouTube members and Patreons. Another great source of help is Malcolm's YouTube channel. Especially his latest deep dive into Godot's Tilt 5 support is very useful for those who wish to enter the game jam using a Tilt 5. I've put a link to his channel in the description. As always, we start with OpenXR on the desktop as Godot has full built-in support for this. We need to download Godot first. You will find the download of the current Godot release on the main website. Currently, this is Godot 4.1.3, but Godot 4.2 is likely out by the time you see this video. The current release candidate for Godot 4.2 can be found on the blog page. The download link will be in the bottom section of this page. You can also download Godot through the download page. Here you will also find an archive of all versions, old and new. In this video, I will be using the normal version of Godot. But I will point out where you can find the c -sharp equivalent code snippets. We will be using 4.1.3 unless I need to point out specific differences. I do highly recommend using Godot 4.2 as it fixes a number of crucial issues. After opening up Godot, we select New Project. We give our project a name and create a folder for it. We will be using the compatibility renderer for our project. We highly recommend using this renderer for XR, especially if you are targeting standalone devices such as the Quest or the Pico. You can use either the mobile or forward plus renderers for desktop VR, but you will need decent hardware. The first thing we do after creating the project is open project settings from the project menu. Scroll down until you find the XR section and select OpenXR. Here we enable the OpenXR feature. You'll notice that Godot immediately asks us to restart, but we can hold off until we change another setting. Next we select the shader section and enable these. Now we can save and restart. It's time to set up our scene, so we create a new 3D scene. We rename the root node to main. We need to add some specific XR nodes. We press add and search for XR. The first node we'll add is the XR Origin 3D node. If you set out a guardian, this node will map to a location at the center of your play space on the floor. Next we add an XR Camera 3D node to our scene. This node will automatically be positioned where your player's headset is. As this only happens when your game runs, I like to pre-position it for visual reference. Now we add two XR Controller 3D nodes to our scene. We rename one to left hand and one to right hand. We need to assign the correct tracker to each hand. As with the camera, these nodes will be automatically positioned, but I like to pre-position them for visual reference. We add a Mesh Instance 3D to each hand and configure a small box mesh. This will allow us to see the hands. Finally, while we see an environment in our editor, this environment and its lighting are added by our editor so we can see the content of our scene. If we run our scene now, we wouldn't see anything. Luckily, the editor has a shortcut to add the environment and lighting into our scene. We use the three dots to open up a pop-up that allows us to do so. 
we do see a warning on our directional lights. This warning informs us that shadows are not implemented on the compatibility renderer. This is true for Godot 4.1, but support for this was added in Godot 4.2. With all this set up, we now need a little bit of code to make things work. For this we go to Godot's documentation. The link to this page is in the description. Scroll down until you find the code snippet we'll be using. Note that there is both a C Sharp and GDScript version of this code. We'll copy the GDScript code. We create a script on our main node. And we replace the default code by pasting in our code snippet. Now we can test our project by pressing on the play button in the top toolbar. Note that this starts Godot in PC VR mode. That will be important later on. The first time we press run, Godot will ask us if we want to use our current scene as our startup scene. Yes, we do. And as expected, we can look around and we see our two boxes move around as we move our controllers around. If we look at our project settings in Godot 4.2, we will find more options on the OpenXR tab. As more OpenXR features are implemented, the list of options presented here will grow. We can leave most of these on their default settings. We do want to change the voviation settings. If supported, this feature will limit the number of pixels rendered in the user's peripheral vision. This can provide a noticeable performance improvement. This feature is currently only supported on the compatibility renderer. We first set the foveation level, which indicates how strong the system is applied. At the highest setting, we render the least amount of pixels. The second setting enables dynamic adjustment of this level. The system will now adjust the setting between low and the selected foveation level based on the current load on the GPU. Note also that our warning on our directional light is no longer shown. Making our project run on standalone headsets such as the Quest or Pico requires a number of extra steps. For this we again refer to our help page. The instructions here have changed for Godot 4.2. You can switch versions in the left bottom corner. As 4.2 hasn't been released yet, at the time I'm recording this video, you will find the updated pages under the latest section. Once it is released, 4.2 will become the default page, but you can switch back to 4.1 by selecting it. Current standalone headsets run Android, and we just need to follow those instructions first. The first step is downloading and installing OpenJDK. Note that up to 4.1.2 we used version 11, but we are now using version 17. I've already installed it, but you can follow the link on the help page. The next step is installing Android Studio. Again, I have it already installed, but you can just follow the link. Important with Android Studio is that it will install different versions of certain components than we need. In Android Studio, open the SDK Manager and select the SDK Tools tab. Here we need to compare all the versions with what it is in the Godot documentation. We can see that we require SDK Build Tools 33.0.2 and we have that selected. Now for the NDK. We need release 23 and we have that selected as well. Lastly, we need to check the version of CMake. We need 3.10 and have that selected. If you do not have these selected, select them and follow the prompts for installing them. We now need to create our debug key store. On Linux or Mac, open up a terminal. In Windows, open up a command prompt. CD to a folder of your choice. Copy and paste the command found on the help pages and run it. A debug key store file should be created. In Godot, go to the editor menu and open up the editor settings. Scroll down until you find the Android settings. The first setting we need is the Android SDK path. You can find this path in the SDK manager. Then you select the key store we just created. Here it points to my original key store file. The only other option I have changed here is clearing the previous install on one click deploy. I found this to be more stable in testing, but it does come at a cost of more wait time. We open the editor menu again and select manage export templates. Here we need to ensure our templates are installed. 
Godot can download them for you. Now things start to deviate, so we first look at Godot 4.1. Go to the asset library and search for loaders. You will find an entry for the Godot XR Android OpenXR loaders plugin. Download and install this plugin. On successful install, we now find an Android folder with a plugin folder that contains our loaders. Next we open the project menu and select the install Android build template option. Now we can configure our export. For this we open the project menu and select export. We need to add a new Android configuration. We'll get to warnings, but we'll deal with them in a minute. We need an export preset for each device we are exporting to, so we rename this to Quest. Next we enable the Use Gradle Build option. After this we need to select the correct plugin to use. As we're exporting to Quest we need the meta entry. Next we need to configure our unique name. Setting this will solve one of our errors. Finally, under XR features we need to set the XR mode to OpenXR. There are some other options of note here for hand tracking and pass through. We don't need those today. We need to repeat this process for any headset we have, so let's set this up for Pico as well. We go through the same steps, but now select the Pico plugin. The other two options here are the KHR plugin, which uses the standard Kronos loader that hopefully will one day be supported by all headsets. And we have the Lynx plugin, which is needed for the Lynx R1 AR headset. Note that this actually contains the Qualcomm OpenXR loaders and will work for a number of devices using Qualcomm Snapdragon Spaces. With two export presets set up, we can see that one is marked as runnable. This preset will be used when we export to the device. We need to make sure that the correct entry is set to runnable before exporting to that device. As I'm using a Quest today, I'll leave that runnable. To deal with our second error message, we need to open up our project settings and search for ETC. We find our option under Textures and simply enable it and save and restart. In the debug menu, we enable Deploy with Remote Debug. This is optional, but will ensure our headset sends information back to the IDE. To run on our headset, we now need to use the Remote Debug option, not the Play button. Under this button, we find a drop-down menu that shows our connected devices. Select the device you wish to run on and the project should run on the device. This capture was recorded on the Quest, showing the project running. For Godot 4.2, the steps are slightly different. Again, we start in our asset library, but now we search for vendors. The plugin has been renamed as it not only contains the vendor specific loaders, it also implements vendor specific OpenXR extensions. At the recording of this video, we do not have a release of this yet, but soon you will find the OpenXR vendors plugin here. For now, we can go to the GitHub repository for this plugin and open the releases page. Here we can download the latest 2.0 release of the vendors plugin. In the asset library, we can now use the import button to install our plugin. Select the plugin and then make sure you tick the ignore asset root tick box. Press install to install the plugin. You may need to reload the project, but we should now have an add-ons folder with the vendors plugin installed. Next we need to select the install Android build template option in our project menu. And now for the part that trips up every single user, including me, you must open project settings, go to the plugin tab and enable our new plugin. Open up the project menu and select export. Create a new Android preset. We can see that we again have our errors, but Godot now has a nice fix import option to fix the ETC2 setting. Godot also reminds us we need to enable the Use Gradle Build option. It's now optional, but we can edit the unique name as well. 
Scrolling further down, we find our XR features, where we can enable our XR mode. Also, our loader selection can be found here, but only if our plugin is enabled. We enable the Meta plugin. Now we scroll all the way to the bottom to find our additional settings. We don't need to change these right now, but I just wanted to show them. Last, we rename this profile to Quest. We now repeat these steps for Pico and for any other device we want to export to. As I explained in the 4.1 section, you must mark the correct preset as runnable when testing. In our debug menu, we enable the Deploy with Remote Debug option. And finally, we use the Remote Debug button and select our Quest to run our game. No need to show it running as it looks exactly the same as our 4.1 version. That completes our Getting Started Rundown. I'll be making a few more videos on where to go next soon. For now, there are two resources that you can look at. The first are the XR demo projects on the official Godot repo. The second is the Godot XR Tools Library. I'll leave links to both in the description. If you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. This greatly helps promote this content on YouTube. If you'd like to help me more directly, please consider becoming a member of my channel or a patron on Patreon, just like all these wonderful people on screen right now. Thank you for watching, until next time.